welcome, welcome. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have any questions about astrology, metaphysics. I'm so excited to be back. I did a live yesterday, first live ever. So I was like, let me come back on today. I did do it at a different time today, though, because I wanted to see like other people. You know what I mean? You know how people are different, available at different times. So today I came on a little bit later. Let me know if you, have, if you guys have questions. Your boyfriend has Capricorn in the second house and it's Moon and Uranus and Neptune. Your boyfriend has Capricorn in the second house and it's Moon. Are you trying to say it's conjunct your Moon and Uranus and Neptune? How will Pluto and Capricorn affect him? Okay, great question. We were actually talking about this yesterday. So... Pluto and Capricorn basically, okay, so what's happening is like, you have to look to see where you have Capricorn in your chart and then what house it's in and then it's going to tell you what it's going to be affecting, like what area of your life it's going to be affecting. So you have those planets in that house. Okay, so if for him, Capricorn is in the, so okay, this is good for you guys to know because like anytime there's there's any sort of transit that's taking place in the world. So like, let's say we just have, Merc we just had Mercury retrograde while it's still kind of happening in Gemini you would have to see where do you have Gemini in your chart and then what house is it in? And then that house is what's going to be affected. So in this situation, your boyfriend has Capricorn in the second house. So whatever Pluto goes through is going to transform. So for him, it's probably going to transform his financial status, okay? In one way, shape or form. It's his personal financial status. The second house deals with finances. What does it mean if there are four planets in one house? So you have a stellium you have a stellium so yeah so people who have like a lot of capricorn placements right now are kind of being hit because of the fact that pluto is moving through capricorn and then it's going to come out of capricorn for a little pe uh, period of time next year go into aquarius and then officially come into aquarius in 2024 so for people who do have capricorn placements they're going to be going through transformations up until 2024 basically welcome new people joining let me know if you guys have any questions about your natal charts astrology if you ask a question, feel free to ask another question. Um, anything to know when the, within the world of like metaphysics, psychic life, how to develop your psychic gifts. I feel like everyone's psychic. I think it's just a matter of tuning into it and tapping into it. Thanks so much, Melissa. Thank you so much for the roses. And thank you for being here as well. Welcome new people joining. Let me know if you guys have any questions about metaphysical world, astrology world um psychic life or whatever we can talk about whatever as long as there's like a topic i'll get started talking and then you have your mars uranus and neptune in the 12th house what does this mean so 12th house is pretty tricky because 12th house basically i've made a lot of videos about this on my youtube channel so definitely go check out my youtube channel welcome scorpio moon yes yeah, scorpio moon is highly psychic so 12th house really is like all about like the illusions and the delusions. It's all about creativity. It's all about like being stuck in your head, like this type of energy, right? So with the 12th house, what you want to do is you want to find a way to channel the energy. So usually it's being creative in one way, shape or form. So Mars in the 12th house could be like, um, because Mars is all about how you express anger. It's also all about how you, um, you love the way I explain things. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So Mars being in the 12th. Okay, so Mars is all about how you express anger. And it's also all about um, what motivates you. So it being in the 12th, actually, because it's Pisces energy, you might have a hard time getting motivated because Pisces is like, it's, it's, it's a water, it's a water planet. So it's like sometimes Pisces wants to be more in their heads compared to like actually doing things. So that could just be a little bit tricky for you. Let me know what sign overall karma. Pretty much Pluto is that. But Uranus and Neptune, usually people within like a, um, within your generation are going to have the same placement. The house is just what's going to be different. So again, you have Neptune in the 12th, which Neptune in the 12th is going to be, again, not seeing things clearly because you have double of that Piscean energy. If you um, want to know more about like the Pisces energy, Neptune energy, 12th house energy, then definitely check out my YouTube videos. I go in depth because... Um, 12th house deals with like past lives, it deals with past life enemies, it deals with um, all these sorts of things, like things that are hidden. It deals with institutions, it deals with um, isolation, you might be interested in writing, 
it's also all to do with romance also so it's kind of like and it's a lot of karma like when you have a lot of 12th house energy you're clearing out a lot of karma in this lifetime scorpio moon third house yeah scorpio moon is definitely an intense placement to have scorpio moon is like you're highly psychic you pick up on everything and like the scorpio moon what it does it like brings out other people's shadows and like basically brings them to the surface and for you it's in the third house which is like gemini so it's like you probably don't have a hard time holding back in terms of like verbalizing what you see welcome new people if you guys have any questions let me know in the comments anything to do with astrology maybe with your birth charts if there's any questions you guys have anything to do with what transits can you see when you will go into labor? Very interesting. There actually is pregnancy indicators in your natal chart. It's a little bit more complex. I've been thinking about making a video on it, but that would have to go on my YouTube. Usually the longer videos, I have to put them on my YouTube. Your moon is in the second, second, second house. Moon in the second. So moon, moon in the second is going to want to work like hard work. It's all about working, like taking your dreams and actually manifesting them into reality. You have an Aries stellium in the 8th house. <laughs> That's intense because Aries is ruled by Mars and then 8th house, which is Scorpio, used to be ruled by Mars. So you're very much like a go-getter. But it's kind of like you're also psychic. So it's like I feel like you're the type of person who has like, like you're able to pick up on things that are going to be like, are going to blow up. For example, like stocks or like crypto. I don't know if you, you're interested in that. You have Sag Mercury in the 3rd house fiery in your speech mercury in the third house is in its place right and it's in, it's in its place sag stellium in the third house so here's the thing sagittarius and um gemini are oppositions okay so they're opposite to each other so it's complementary energy so you basically have the sagittarian energy which is all about going on a quest learning new things expanding your mind being um intellectual like all these sorts of things like basically what sag does is like First, from young, what they do is like, what is the meaning of life? Why am I here? What's my... Per like, they ask themselves these questions and then they go on a quest. They go on a quest to basically figure out what it all means, right? So you go traveling and you start to do all these sorts of things. So because you have it in the third house, it's all about communication for you. Let me just see here one second. Aries stellium in the fourth house. So Aries stellium in the fourth house, again, you're a go-getter. And you probably get a lot of your ideas in your home, actually. Empty 12th house, is that good or bad? So with astrology, there's no good or bad placements. That's the thing to understand. You know, there's just like energy that like you're born into having. And then it's a matter of like, this is how I see astrology. It's like, you're born into having this energy and like, you just have to learn how to balance it to basically live at your full potential, right? So it's like, if you're born with like a placement where it's like debilitated or it's like, let's say like, for example, Mars and Cancer. Mars or Cancer doesn't like to be in Mars, right? Mars doesn't like Cancer. So you knowing this, that maybe you're going to have a hard time being motivated. Maybe you're going to have a hard time expressing your anger. Then you can work on that to balance the energy. Thank you so much. That was helpful. You are so welcome. I'm glad that it was helpful. Virgo moon in the 12th house. Virgo moon is highly psychic. And then 12th house, also psychic. So you probably like, okay, so it's actually really good because you have a balance of energies in there too. Your chart's actually really interesting because you have all of the oppositions balancing each other. So Virgo moon, highly psychic because it basically takes Piscean ideas, grounds them into the earth plane. 12th house is the Piscean energy. So you kind of have that balancing going on in there as well. So I'm sure all of your placements in your... um chart are going to be like let's say like you have a libra sun it's probably going to be in like the seventh house or something like that seventh house sun mercury and venus gemini in sidereal astrology i love sidereal astrology so for people who are interested in like really finding out like who their partner is going to be like i find that sidereal astrology is really good for that stuff <laughs> are you lucky it's basically like it's a nice balance of the energies in your natal chart taurus moon hey ray welcome back Taurus moon in third house is challenging aspect to Saturn and Mars. Let me know the rest of your placements. Sag Mars in the fourth house. Sag Mars in the fourth house. So again, in Mars, like Sagittarius likes to be there because it's fiery. It's go-getter. The thing is with Sagittarius energy, and this is going to apply to Ryan as well, is like you, it's going to take you a while to figure out what you want to do. But when Sag picks something, 
they like go after it, you know, like they're like, they focus on it and they're really good at what it is that they do. Aquarius, Mars and the sixth house. Aquarius, Mars and the sixth house. Sorry, I'm just looking at something that's popping up at the top there. Aquarius, Mars and the sixth house. So things that would motivate you would be anything that's like different, like unique. You said you think it's like a square Saturn and Mars. Sidereal. Yeah, sidereal is sidereal. They have so many charts, like they have so many different charts. I'm explaining your life. Oh, I love you too. Thank you for tuning in. So Aquarius, Mars, yeah, like things that motivate you. Like, okay, so this is the thing with Aquarius energy. And if any of you guys have Aquarius energy in your chart, like it's good to know, like Aquarius is 10 to 15 years ahead of their time. So for you guys, it's like you have ideas and it's like usually you don't act on them because like we all think everyone's like us, right? So you don't act on the idea and then it's like, you know, like you forget about it, whatever. And then it becomes like a, a trend. It becomes something that's like popular. It becomes something that like other people do. So it's like with Aquarius energy, what you guys have to do is like when you get the idea, like put it into action because you're actually meant to propel the collective forward. Also what Aquarius struggles with, you said your whole chart is fixed Aquarius energy. Yeah, something Aquarius struggles with is like not fitting in with other people because they're ahead of their time. So it's like there's always kind of like this, like they're detached, like people call them detached, but it's like because they're very much ahead of their time, this is the reason why they feel like they don't fit. You said as an Aquarius moon, yeah, you're probably very psychic, like Aquarian energy is psychic in a different way, if that makes sense. It's like Aquarius energy like channels through ideas that are like scientific ideas, inventor ideas, ideas in general that are going to propel the collective forward, like that's just like the Aquarius energy in general. Whoops, I accidentally clicked on something. Let's see what else is there in here. Let me know, you guys, if you guys have any questions about astrology. You said Chiron conjunct Saturn and Mars. So with the Chiron conjunction, it's kind of like your karma, because Saturn is karma, right? So your karma in this lifetime and what you're healing is, is connected. So you could look at even like your life purpose being connected. And with Mars, it's kind of like the go-getter energies all, all together in there. Your intuition is something else. Do you have a lot of 12th house energy, Melissa, or Pisces? Yeah. Usually people who have like 12th house Piscean, Neptune dominant, all these sorts of things, like they're very, very good at manifestation. You said your Sag, Sun, Virgo, Moon, Virgo rising. Sag, Mercury, can I give you a summary okay i'll give you a summary with the virgo rising in there it's like you expect people to treat you like royalty um highly psychic you attract a lot of people a lot of people from like a lot of different walks of life you know that like you're meant to be like praised in one way shape or form in your life um you could be interested in ex expressing yourself creatively okay with that sag energy in there Neptune conjunct ascendant people really project and copy your insta stories see Aquarius I'm telling you guys people who have Aquarius energy in their chart they always pick up on trends it can even be like fashion trends it's like they're gonna start doing something like I know someone who is an Aquarius rising who started doing like the clips before like the whole world started doing the clips like Aquarius energy is just ahead of their time they just like it's because like you guys are like open in your crown so it's like you guys pick up on it floating in the astral plane you said you have Jupiter in your third house, 11th house Chiron, retrograde, and Scorpio, though. So with Chiron being in the 11th house, it's interesting because everything that I'm saying about Aquarius probably resonates for you because Aquarius 11th house is connected. That's what you're healing through in this lifetime with the Chiron in there. Jupiter in the third house. So you would make money from anything to do with the written or spoken word. But the third house is Gemini, so it's going to be shorter uh, written or spoken word so it can be like twitter it can be like short stories poems like things like this you could also have an interest in that it could also be communications or social media also north node in gemini in the 10th house my friend i'm really curious to know like if you have a desire to be in the public eye to do something with the public like even when i pick up on your energy like when when i'm like tapping into your chart like there's just such like a I don't know it's almost like you feel within you that you should be interacting with the public because the 10th house is dealing with the public gemini is communication so it's kind of like it can manifest differently for different people a lot of the time north node and gemini is like you're gonna be um so sorry something popped up there so north node and gemini is going to be very much like um almost like a big fish in a small pond so it could be in like your community maybe you're interested in like stand-up comedy or something like that i don't know 
Thank you, BJ Alexer. Jupiter in the 11th house and in Virgo. Why did you put a crying face? Jupiter in the 11th house, you could actually make money online, okay? So Jupiter in the 11th house are people who can have large social media followings. So maybe you're gonna be interested in making money, or sorry, maybe you're gonna be interested in general in doing things like YouTube, social media, all these sorts of things, and in turn, you would make money from that. Virgo, you have to repeat, okay? So if it's something you're interested, you're gonna have to repeat it. You said, yeah, you know, but with Neptune Chiron in conjunction with, with your ascendant, it's kind of hard. Thoughts on Gemini celliums. Okay. So Gemini energy is basically this. Okay, so this is the thing with Gemini energy. I feel like Geminis kind of just like get a bad rap for no reason, but it's like, okay, we have to look at the wheel like this. Okay, we have to look at the wheel like this. It's like Aries is the beginning energy, right? So Aries initiates things. So they put through the idea. Then we go into um, Taurus. Taurus builds. So that's the thing. People who have Aries energy are going to be the initiators. So they're going to be like, I want to do this. I want to do that. I have this idea. They need a team. They don't need a team, but like for them, it's it's uh, beneficial if they have people to delegate their ideas to, right? Because then they say the idea. It basically helps. Um, it gets the other people working. So things like manager positions, all these sorts of things, you'll find Aries placements in there, okay? Then we go into Taurus. Taurus builds, okay? So out of Aries, first house, you go into Taurus. Taurus is building the ideas that Aries started, right? And then we move into Gemini. Send me an email if you're interested. I will get to all of your questions, don't worry. So then we get into Gemini, which is a third house. Gemini is the first energy, right? So we have first house, second house, third house. Gemini is the first energy of connecting people, okay? So it's like it takes the Aries action, the building of Taurus, and now Gemini is connecting people, okay? So they're going to be, you know, the ones who have a lot of friends. They're going to be the ones who go to like networking events, talk to people, connect with people, all these sorts of things. So that's the Gemini energy. So when you have a Gemini stellium, you have to talk, <laughs> you have to speak. If you're not speaking, you're not like, you're suppressing your voice, okay? So Gemini energy deals with that. Also Gemini deals with social media. So if you have a Gemini stellium, you could be interested in doing social media. Um, maybe working in PR, maybe working in communications, maybe working in marketing, these sorts of things. But the thing is Gemini energy is gonna have a lot of friends and they basically get, get by in life by um, connections. And the thing is with the Gemini energy also, it's like, they basically have to learn to ground the energy because it's like, if we look at it again through the houses, the first house being Aries, that's okay. Aries energy, you have to look at it as like a baby learning how to walk. That's how I see Aries energy. It, it falls, it walks. It falls, it tries to walk. It falls, it tries to walk until it walks. It's persistence, okay? Then Taurus, again, puts it into action. Then Gemini is also earlier on. So that's why Gemini people sometimes have like a childlike energy to them. They look very youthful, um... They're very funny, like they're very in tune with the inner child, okay? So you said Gemini and Jupiter in the ninth house. So ninth house, Jupiter, you could be interested in, um, basically abundance for you would come through doing things that are like Sagittarian-like. So maybe travel, um, maybe you could go travel abroad and make money. Maybe you would leave your hometown and make money abroad. Um, academia, or just like learning a lot of things. So maybe you have a lot of like certifications, maybe you're a personal trainer. Maybe then after being a personal trainer, you become a yoga instructor, like things like this. You're not even excelling academically. Yeah, the thing is like, um, the academic world is like, like don't feel bad if you're not, not excelling academically because it's like everyone has a gift on this earth plane and like it's just a matter of finding that gift. You said, let me see what you said. Sorry, I'm just scrolling up here to see. You said you have no idea what you want to do in life, so you're not sure whether you want to be in the public eye, but you definitely feel like you're good at communicating with loads. I mean, public, it doesn't have to be like public eye. It could just be like real estate or it could be, it doesn't have to be customer service, but like working with the public in one way, shape or form. Pisces, eighth house moon. Okay, eighth house moon is basically like having a Scorpio moon in a way, right? Because it's like, it's in the Scorpio house, which is the eighth house. So through your life, you're going to go through a lot of changes. You're going to go through a lot of ups and downs on an emotional level. Also with the eighth house moon, because the moon deals with the mother, there could have been addiction in the home. There could have been codependency, like maybe the mother was emotionally unavailable or whoever took on the mother role. Let's say the father took on the mother role. Let's say there was an absence of the mother. Like you'd have to explore all of those sorts of things. All right, let's see. 12th house Pluto retrograde. Oh, also for the Pisces moon. So Pisces, highly psychic. Okay, highly psychic. 
Oh, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Hello. Welcome, Mal Malvin Ollie. Malvin Ollie. Welcome, welcome. I did decide to go live today and I decided to go a little bit later than yesterday. You feel that it may be because your Saturn is in the ninth house too. Can you tell me what you're referring to? Because it was a while ago, I think, that I answered your question. Welcome, you people joining. Let me know what you guys want to know about. It could be within your natal chart. It could be within metaphysical world, all these sorts of things. So yeah, Pisces, 8th house, moon, like in general, because it's in the Scorpio house, you're going to go through a lot of changes in life. You're going to go through um, like transformation on an emotional level is really what that is. And then it's like Pisces energy in there. It's like, just be, be like careful in general with like substances and all these sorts of things. Because like Pisces wants to be out of their body. Like they just like, it's boring for them to be on the earth plane. You said Jupiter, Jupiter in the ninth house in Gemini and you're, oh, you, yes, 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 yes. You're not excelling academically. Let me just see what you said. You feel like it's because your Saturn's in the ninth house. Okay. So it's interesting that you have Saturn in the ninth house because this is a thing. Ninth house and like Sagittarius energy is very much like they want to know the meaning of life. They want to like, they ask themselves these deep philosophical questions and then they set out on a quest to get those answers. So for them, you can you can have the traditional route of like learning from, you know, school and then doing your master's and PhD, whatever, right? That could happen. That could manifest for some people. But also it can be like traditional, untraditional or learning that's not un unconventional learning. OK, so learning that's not conventional, where it's like you learn by traveling, you learn by experiencing different cultures, you learn by um, experiencing different people, like all these sorts of things, different languages. Hello, Mohammed. Welcome. I'm doing well. How are you? Thank you for joining today. Same thing as yesterday, answering metaphysical and astrology questions. Can I tell you a little bit about Saturn? It's in the Pisces. It's in Pisces in the success. Okay. So for you guys asking about Saturn, you have to look at Saturn like this. This is how I see Saturn. Saturn is like the planet of karma. So wherever it is in your chart, that's kind of like what you karmically incarnated to do. So for example, like BJ Elixir with like the Saturn in the ninth house, what that could mean is like karmically, and it's interesting that you're struggling in school because it's almost like karmically you incarnated to work through exactly that, if that makes sense. Your daughter has a ninth house stellium and she does not. Yeah, yeah, a lot of the time because Sagittarius energy, which is the ninth house energy, like they, so what I find with Sagittarian energy, it's like they're scattered because they bounce off of Gemini in that way, okay? So Sagittarian energy is scattered in the sense where it's like it wants to learn this, it wants to learn that and wants to learn because it goes on the quest, right? It goes on the quest to learn. And then what happens with Sagittarius energy and usually later on in life, they take everything that they've learned and then they teach it in one way, shape or form. So it's like, it doesn't have to be traditional teaching, but it's like Sagittarian placements or ninth house placements are the type that are like also maybe going to develop their own philosophies in life or develop their own belief systems in life. Like they're the types that are going to be interested in learning about different religions and belief, like all these sorts of things. So that's really the Sagittarian energy. So it's like, it's really hard to keep Sagittarius like in one place. It really is, especially if you have a Sagittarian child, it's like, you'll know that that kid is like, oh, with this friend or that friend or that friend, like they're learning, okay? They're just like learning. That's how they learn. They just like learn in a different way. And like, maybe like, you know, sitting at a desk isn't gonna be a type of way that like they are interested in learning. Sorry, back to your sixth house. Yes, 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 yes. So because you have Saturn in the sixth house, so Saturn in the sixth house is karma around anything that's Virgo-like, okay? So maybe you were someone when you were growing up, maybe you're worried about health in one way, shape, or form, right? You know, maybe you could be someone who's like a hypochondriac. Like that's like kind of like in that way where you have to break through that. You have to break through that fear. Um, it could also be like because Virgo sometimes puts other people always ahead of themselves. So that could be something that you work through. <laughs> I know I was hesitant to tell you because I don't want to like you know, say anything, but yeah, that could be something. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is. It's just like, that's the Virgo like energy. Virgo like, okay, every sign has a light, sh every sign has a light side and a shadow side, okay? So it's like, it, it depends like what aspect you go into the sign. Yeah, sixth house is about work, but it's like sixth house Virgo is about health, healing, and service. So it's like, you could be interested in becoming a doctor. It depends on your whole chart, right? You could be interested in becoming a doctor or you can go in like a, um, non-traditional route where it's like maybe you want to do energy healing like things like this like that's virgo like energy okay and um the thing is virgo like if it falls into the shadow because okay what happens with virgo energy it's like they find something that they like and they just like stick to that thing you know and it's like 
especially if it's like a diet or like like it's things like this where it's like where it's like an exercise routine like they find that thing and they just like want to do it all the time right and they keep doing it they keep doing it that's like the virgo like energy it's like they keep keep doing it you know so saturn in the sixth house you're breaking through that karma it is just about work like that's an aspect of virgo yeah but also it's about being of service okay it's a lot of virgo placements are healers because you guys bounce off of piscean energy right so it's like you guys have a natural healing energy to you so you guys might attract people into your life that siphon this one really good thing about virgo is you're able to channel the energy like the piscean energy and ground it that's kind of like what's beneficial like with virgo because pisces gets lost up here like pisces tends to get lost north node conjunct uranus so it's kind of like your identity and your life purpose are like in tandem like they're they're conjunct like they're really really like connected together you said not your north node in virgo yeah so north node in virgo like you could be interested in again healing of some sort so maybe again traditional maybe it could be a doctor maybe it could be a nurse um or it could be it depends right or it could also be maybe things like energy work or all these sorts of things welcome to people joining let me know if you guys have any sort of questions on astrology and all these sorts of things I am live today yes yes that's what's really good about astrology it's like to all the new people who are joining like basically what I was saying earlier it's like the really good thing about astrology is like you can see what energy you have in your chart and then try to balance it whoops part of fortune conjunct Jupiter in the 10th house any insight on Jupiter retrograde in your chart it makes you nervous um no need to be nervous. Jupiter retrograde just kind of means like, okay, I find certain placements that like it only affects you up until your Saturn return. Like that's just my opinion. Um, so Jupiter retrograde up until maybe your Saturn return, you could have struggles with bringing abundance through. You have Saturn in the sixth house, but in Aquarius, you're going through Saturn. Yeah, a lot of the millennials are going through their Saturn return right now. It's going to end next year. So people who are going through their Saturn return right now are like, like, Okay, so Saturn return is like you reap what you sow. So basically what you did up until the age of 27 when your Saturn return starts, you kind of like, it depends, like whether you were in more in the positive aspects of yourself or more in the negative aspects. If you were working hard towards something, you're going to reap the rewards during your Saturn return. Saturn return is going to like shake things up. So like, let's say you were married before your Saturn return. Maybe you cheated during, you know, your 20s on your partner. Now during your Saturn return, you're going to go through a divorce. That's usually Saturn in the in the in the um, seventh house. It's not intense. I've been through Saturn return. It's not intense. It's just like it really shakes you out of your comfort. It's really what that is. You're probably like not going to be friends with a lot of people you used to be friends with. Like you might move. It's like drastic things. Like sometimes people have their first kid around their Saturn return. Some people get married around their Saturn return. All these sorts of things. You said your rising is so badly aspected. There's lots of squares and oppositions. What's your rising sign? Saturn in the eighth house. Saturn in the eighth house. So karmically, there's things going on for you that are scorpionic. So it's like anything to do with sex, death, rebirth, joint finances, taxes. Um, you're a Virgo rising. Hey, there's so many of you guys on here. Welcome. Virgo rising, royalty in a past life. I know so many people are like, how could we all be royalty? doesn't matter. Maybe it's not in this dimension. But you guys carry that energy within you guys. You guys know, like, you should be treated. Because, I'll tell you guys why, Virgo rising, you have to look at the 12th house in the whole signs chart, okay? 12th house is Leo. So past life, you guys used to be royalty of some sort. And you guys expect people to treat you that way. Yeah, Virgo rising, love the energy. A lot of, like, musicians were, like, Virgo rising, actually. Whoops. Also, it's, like, what's interesting... Neptune conjunct Mars. So that's like um, not being able to see clearly maybe your goals, right? Because Mars is putting things into action. And then Neptune is going to put illusions in like that area for you. I find like, okay, so I find like 12th house energy, again, especially up until your Saturn return, because the planets and, um, okay, so the planets and the houses shift. Okay, so there's something called secondary. I will get to your question, Muhammad, don't worry. I saw it. I did see it. Um, so the planets and the houses do shift around your second Saturn, sorry, your first Saturn return, but also by the time you get to your second Saturn return. Okay. So I find with 12th house energy, it's kind of like, 
almost like a cloud around your head. It's almost like a veil on your eyes. Like you don't see things clearly. Okay, so you said you have a question of part of fortune in the 10th house of cancer. So 10th house, once again, deals with the public. It's interesting because you have that push-pull energy going on in there. Cancer wants to be at home. 10th house, which is Capricorn, wants to deal with the public. You said your Mars in Leo is in the 12th house. You said, okay, hold on, hold on. Let me go back up one second. You said it's weird because you're a Capricorn and you already and you've already had Saturn in Capricorn since 2017. You're tired. Is your Saturn in Capricorn or Aquarius? Mars in Leo in the 12th house. So Mars in Leo, action, putting things forward, going after like Leo like things. You want to be a leader. You want to be seen as being a leader. 12th house. Again, it's that Piscean energy, so you might struggle to actually put things into action. You have no 12th house at all. Do Chiron, conjunct, ascendant people have a lot of enemies in their life? I find that people who have a lot of 12th house energy have a lot of enemies in their life. I find like that the houses are going to probably tell us more about that. It's in Aquarius, but you're Capricorn heavy and placements. Yeah, so there's something in astrology called like um, your dominant placements. I'm not sure if you guys know about that. You can always check it out on like um, astro.com. And then it's like you have like everyone thinks it's just the big three. It's like there's so much going on in your. It's so funny. I, was, it's, I started saying that and then you asked the question BJ Alexa. Okay, so it's like there's so much going on in your chart. I think a lot of people think like big three are going to tell you everything about a person. Like you could have a big three thing going on and it's like the dominant placements are going to be something completely different within your chart. So definitely check that out, you guys. What energy does having your big three and all different modalities give you? What were your big three? Again, I think you did say it earlier. Can you tell us a little about when there is no seventh house in your chart? Okay, so there's always... Okay, so it's kind of tricky to see, but you always have something going on in the house. So if you don't have seventh house, you'd have to see where your Libra is and then what house the Libra is. And I'm sure you're asking because you're asking about uh, finding your partner. Because I know people freak out when they don't have seventh house energy. They think they're not going to have a partner, but it doesn't mean this. Your life wasn't going well since 2017. You're tired and <laughs> of Saturn in your chart. Yeah, so Saturn, like... Saturn is going to restrict you. So it's like, first of all, it's the Lord of Karma, but also it restricts you in that area. So it's kind of like wherever you have Saturn, it's it basically puts a restriction on that. So let me know what house you have it in, actually. You said you have it in Capricorn. So you're also probably being hit hard because of the fact that Capricorn's in Pluto. Aquarius Sun, Aqua Moon, Virgo Rising. So you're very much go-getter. Aquarius Moon, highly like psychic, connected to the other side. Great ideas. It comes through probably as thoughts for you. You should probably write them down, actually. Anything. So back to um, the Aquarius moon, sorry. So Aquarius moon is also all to do with... It's so funny. I just did this video actually today for my YouTube page. I haven't posted it yet, though. Um, so it's funny because, like, Aquarius moon is very detached emotionally, but at the same time, they crave attached, like, to, to, like, have a partner who understands them. A lot of the time, Aquarius moon does manifest, like parents into their life specifically a mother or if again if there's no mother you have to look and see who was the dominant feminine energy in in your life sometimes the roles are reversed between the parents because what happens is like if you have a certain dynamic with the mother or whoever played the mother figure in your life or if there was a lack of the mother figure it affects your ability to receive okay in your life aquarius moon is your favorite placement you said now since you're a virgo rising mercury is going direct and Saturn so this is the thing like okay so this is like my opinion on like uh predictions in terms of like astrology like don't get rigid in terms of like you're waiting for the astrology prediction like this is why I don't usually post astrology predictions like on my page because it's like people get kind of stuck like okay this is what's gonna happen this is what's gonna happen you should still live your life regardless you know if you want to do something like don't be like oh it's mercury retrograde now I can't do this I can't do you know what I mean it's like don't get stuck on like um predictions oh you can't send anything either happens or not okay gotcha aquarius rising neptune mars chiron here you describe that really well you're an aquarius moon yeah that's the thing like aquarius moon is very like ahead of their time 
Uh, a lot of the time you guys are kind of like a lone wolf, you know, it's like you have friends, you could have a lot of friends actually, because it's like Aquarius energy is like, it's the 11th house, so it's all about large groups of people. It's all about connecting people together. It's all about like, whenever I tap into the 11th house Aquarius energy, I always see someone standing on a stage giving some sort of speech to a lot of people. Like that's kind of the energy. So it's like, it's an expansive energy. But at the same time, you guys are very detached. So it's like Aquarius Moon can have a lot of friends, but you guys are kind of like the floater. You guys like move like between different groups. Let's see, you said it's a pending situation. Okay, all good. Got to leave it up to the universe in that case. Should you avoid signing contracts during Saturn retrograde? No, but Mercury retrograde, if you can avoid it, is probably best. If you can't, make sure you read and double check everything. If it's like a... So this is what I do with contracts. If I can wait to like not sign it for whatever reason, I wait until after Mercury retrograde, personally. If you can't, make sure that you double check everything. If it's like a serious contract, make sure you get a lawyer to check everything for you, um, all these sorts of things. Cause like what happens with Mercury, it's like when Mercury goes retrograde, it just like, cause it affects communication. So like there's something you don't see, you know? And that's the thing. And also what I find a lot of the time with Mercury retrograde, like let's say it was a contract that was before Mercury retrograde, then in that case, it's something that you already wanted to do before Mercury retrograde. Cause Mercury, like, okay, the whole reason Mercury retrograde happens, it wants us to stop. It wants us to rest. You have to look at like the letter, the words that start with R-E. So it wants us to stop. It wants us to rest. It wants us to reflect, right? So what Mercury retrograde does is it basically like creates that for you. So it's like, maybe you're going to have your car break down or maybe your, your flight is going to be delayed. It's just like, it's for this reason because it wants us to just like explore. So to answer your question, during Saturn retrograde, no, I have not heard anything about that during Saturn retrograde. Your ex sinistry was eighth Lilith falling in her eighth house her mars falling in your so eighth house i mean what i'm picking up on from you saying that i feel like there was like manipulation maybe sexual manipulation that took place emotional manipulation maybe there was codependency between the two of you guys because scorpio you guys when it's in the shadow of itself like there's so because scorpio energy is very intelligent and like because they can pick up on people they know what to say to get people under their grasp okay especially when they're like a scorpio goes through three different well some people are going to say seven i say three goes through three different transformations throughout their life okay so first you're the scorpion which is like the lower level version of scorpio scorpio eighth house okay it's the same thing so the scorpion it's kind of like when you're beneath the surface you're able to pick up on people's triggers maybe you're the type that says the trigger to trigger that person like the, this type of thing right and then Basically, you want to go out of that and then eventually you get to the eagle, right? Where you're kind of seeing things from a higher perspective and then you become the alchemist. So maybe that was taking place in your dynamic. Some sort of like I was getting manipulation of some sort was taking place between the two of you guys for sure. And it was probably highly karmic actually because of the Lilith in there. And actually Mars because Mars again also deals with sex. What else do you guys have in here? You said which site is the most re reliable? Okay, so for dominant planets... What I would do is I would go on astro.com. I'll tell you guys right now. Hold on. So you go on astro. So the way that I do it is I type in astro. Hold on. Astro. And then I type in extended chart selection. So you want to go there. Hold on one second. And then under that one, what you guys want to do is you're gonna pick again some people like whole signs some people like um the placid is it depends like whichever one you prefer and then you would basically go i think it was under like then you would go to find basically your dominant placements and then it's gonna tell you um the percentages hold on i think it's actually one second here i think you go under pullin slash astrolog And then under chart type, yeah, you would go under the simple chart delineation by pull in. And then it's going to be all the way at the bottom. There's going to be like percentages. Okay. Isn't sentence tree indicating a past life connection? Yeah, eighth house. Again, it can because it's like karmic. So anytime we have something karmic, it's past life. You're clearing it in this lifetime. And like a lot of the time people say, like they think that karma is bad. It's just a balancing of energy. So it's like 
maybe in a last lifetime that person cheated on you maybe in this lifetime it gets like sorted out by you leaving that person in one way shape or form what are my thoughts on an eighth house perfection year hold on one second let me just see jupiter is one of your most dominant planets so for you you're all about expanding the mind like i'm curious to know do you have a pull to go travel do you have a pull to go to another land like this is where you're gonna have like your um experiences and this is how you're gonna basically flourish you know for whatever reason for you bj alexer like what i'm picking up on is like i feel like your energy suppressed wherever you are located right now i don't know if you have a pull to go like elsewhere okay hold on one second let me see what else there is here your dominant planet is pluto and the signature sign is capricorn yeah pluto is intense you're gonna go through constant transformation throughout your life how do you know what is your dominant planet i don't know if you were here when i was explaining to go on um astro.com i actually did make a video about this a while ago but it's probably like further down my page like is saturn different when it hits your sun sign so you might struggle with the ego okay you also probably have a lot of karma to clear in terms of like your identity also karma with the father okay saturn hitting the sun it's true you guys met each other and you get along as in a couple of as in two days ago i thought you said it was your ex do you only go through your annual annual projection are you talking about the solar return you're living on your uranus line and you want to move to your birthplace yeah see there you go yeah sometimes like um if you look at your like um what is it called astro cartography like there's literal places in the world that like can trigger negative things within your chart and some places that can trigger positive or just neutral this is why like people would look at like arranged marriages back in the day and they would compare birth charts because sometimes people getting married together are going to activate negative planets within each other so for example people who have jupiter in like the eighth house like that's inheritance through a spouse you know so that would get activated after you get married right so things like this this is why like for that kind of stuff i would say vedic sidereal astrology is like the best because they have so many charts to look at i don't know vedic though not that well let's see she's your ex and you began chatting a it's Mercury retrograde. Exes always come back during Mercury retrograde. How can you balance your Libra sun and Aries rising? Okay, here's the thing with Libra energy. Libra energy, because you have it in the sun sign. Okay, the sun sign is the identity. It's the ego. It's who you truly are as a person. Not who you truly are as a person, but it's like the ego, right? The identity, right? It's The sun is like your first impression kind of thing, okay? Especially like with the rising. With also the rising sometimes. So what happens when you have a Libra sun? It's kind of like your identity is being created through people right because libra is the seventh house so it's like you create who you are as a person by having relationships by having friends but libra what tends to happen is you sometimes fall into people pleasing because you want everyone to like you right so the thing libra has to learn in life is to be more like aries so it's interesting you have an aries rising because it's like okay libra and aries are oppositions and you always want to learn from your opposition so Aries is very much like, I don't want to use the term explosive, but they're very, they show their emotions, right? It's just the energy that they have. Libra a lot of the time suppresses. That's why Libra sometimes is actually really angry because Libra doesn't express the emotions the way that Aries does, right? So for Libra, they have to learn basically, to ex and it's mainly anger. Actually, sometimes Libra like placements struggle with anger and they have to learn from Aries because they have to express their anger. Aries rising. Aries rising is starting a new life cycle, okay? So a new karmic cycle, you could be, you know, within your family and maybe your family was like a line of cooks. You're the one who comes through and says, I don't want to be a cook. I want to do this. Also, you could be interested in maybe in entrepreneurship or being a manager. A lot of managerial people or entrepreneurs have Aries rising or just like in the big three or stellium. What does it mean when you have only direct placements? So you're saying you don't have retrograde? It doesn't, it doesn't, basically like when I see like, a chart and they don't have any retrograde it's kind of like you're not relearning that lesson you know that's the way that i see it because retrograde adds a restriction in a way where it's like a resistance actually on in in that particular area let me see i'm just catching up to the messages now is it bad to have saturn and jupiter in retrograde in your birth chart? no so there's no good or bad placements in astrology don't freak out when someone says this is bad whatever right it's an energy that you have and it's like just a matter of learning how to um balance the energy so saturn retrograde actually is an absence of a father figure early on in life so whether that was mental emotional 
physical, there's some sort of absence that takes place there. Jupiter retrograde just might mean you might struggle with like abundance. What's the balance between Capricorn sun and Virgo rising? Oops, hold on. The messages are going up. You said astro cartography was freakishly accurate for you. It's so interesting. You say you have Capricorn sun and Virgo rising too. <laughs> There's a lot of you guys on here. Aries risings are your favorite people. You love them so much. You have Saturn line going through your home. Yeah, as astro cartography, like really, really. Also, like, I don't know if any of you guys have a 12th house sun, but a lot of the time 12th house sun leaves their homeland wherever they were born and they basically live and die abroad. Uh, so that's a random fact. Let me go back up here. What's the balance between Capricorn sun and Virgo rising? So you're very grounded. You're very, very grounded. Like you're very earthy. The thing is like, okay, so here's the thing, like with the earth signs, so with all the signs, and actually I meant to say this for Aquarius earlier. So I don't know if there's any Aquarius people that are tuning in here, but Aquarius energy is like, okay, so you have to look at it like this. Gemini is the first air sign, right? So it's kind of like a kid. Oh my gosh, this is exciting. This is exciting. I want to learn this, all these sorts of things. Then the next air sign is going to be Libra. Libra's connecting people. So Libra's gonna be like the party host. They wanna have dinner parties, all these sorts of things. That's Libra energy. Finally, by the time it gets to Aquarius, Aquarius is just like, there's such a wisdom with the Aquarian energy where they're just like over it. You know, they're not like chatty or sociable in the way that like, you know, Aquar um, Gemini and Libra are. So Aquarius is like, they're still an air sign. They're still about the mind, but they're more about ruminating within themselves, you know? And it's like, they connect people, but they're still like protective of their energy. So same thing with the earth signs, okay? So it's like, you have Taurus and then you have Virgo. And then by the time you get to Capricorn, it's like Capricorn's that same, like, it's like uh, when I tap into like these energies, it's like, they're more like grounded. They're more mature. They're more like in their person, right? So it's like, that's kind of like the balance. So like Virgo, for example, is going to be like, I want to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to keep doing this like repetition until I get my goal. Whereas Capricorn is going to be like, I understand that like I have to, you know, have successes, have failures until I get to my goal. Whereas like Virgo is going to be like, no, I'm just doing it this way. I know my way is right. And even like the thing is like Virgo ends up accomplishing what they need to accomplish because of the fact that they are repetitive, right? Capricorn knows that they like basically with a Capricorn energy is like they know that like other people can help them get to their goals. That's the difference. Okay. So it's kind of like Capricorn is willing to get a mentor. Capricorn is willing to try it differently. Like they still have the goal in mind, but it's like, it's just like a different way that it goes, like that they go about it. Let's see. Does it mean that your solar return all of a sudden, you know, it's like, oh, you're entering a new year. You're entering a new energy. Um, in terms of the solar return, it's like, Every time you, you, okay, every time you have to look at it kind of like this. It's like every year for you has like a, there's certain transits that hit you. There's certain way where like placements that you're like, you know, um, but that your like natal chart is like hitting like all these sorts of things. Right. So by the time you enter your, or your solar return, it's like, you're starting fresh. You're starting a new leaf. That means I'm more of a Capricorn, not a Virgo rising. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like you have to look at the dominance because it's like, you know, the rising is going to kind of tell you like the houses, right? But you have to look at the rest of the chart, like the energy in your chart. So it's like, you know, there's so much to look at when you look at astrology. Is it nine house for me now? Is it nine house for me now? If I'm born in late December 2002 or eighth house, you'd have to, you'd have to, I'd, like, I'd have to look that up. So you'd have to like, let me know. Do you believe in degrees? I do, but I don't really focus on them that much, to be honest. Like, I just know the 29th degree is, like, the most intense degree to have. The rest of them, the way that I see degrees is, like, it just kind of tells you at what point in the sign you are. So, like, let's say you're looking at, like, your rising sign. Sometimes, if you're, like, 5 to 10 degrees of the rising sign, maybe the previous rising sign is going to resonate with you. And same thing with, like, the ending degrees, maybe, the af like, the one after is going to resonate more with you, Okay. So that's really what that is. And also sometimes like the degrees matter in terms of like when you're looking at like conjunctions where it's like moon or sorry, when it's like sun and Mercury, you would look at like degrees, right? Things like that. But it's like this degree means this, this degree means that like I'm not, I don't focus on that too much. What about mothers who have a 12th house stellium? 
Your mother's a millennial, born in 18, 1987. Interesting. So it depends, okay? It depends like what aspect she went into. Is she self-aware where she's like working with the energy? Or I keep getting that there's an emotional un unavailability for whatever reason. I keep picking up on that. Yeah, something of like, because it's like Piscean 12th house energy feels a lot. So like what happens is like if it's not healed or if it's not like, you know, worked up, worked upon in one way, shape or form, what tends to happen is like they shut off emotionally, right? They don't. And like emotional world is connected to the intuitive world and they're highly psychic. Maybe she even has like dreams that come true. I'm curious to know, like, is she in tune with this aspect of herself or is she not in tune with this aspect of herself? Virgo Risings carry their uh, parents' karma burden. I wouldn't necessarily say that for Virgo Risings, no. I would say that more so, like, the thing is, like, okay, here's the thing with karma. Okay, here's the thing with karma. It's, like, back in the day, what, what would happen? It's, like, like, the parents would do something. And, yes, back then it was true that, like, they would pass it down to the children. Now we're moving into the higher vibration. So it's like, there's like, for example, like the millennial generation, Pluto and Scorpio that I talk about, they're clearing out karma. But it's like, I feel like whenever we talk about karma, people think that it's negative. There's no good or bad. It's a balancing of energy. So the thing is, it's like, whether it was like, like, I think everyone is clearing out some form of generational stuff, you know? So it's like, I wouldn't say that it's like just Virgo rising clearing out parent, parent, parental karma. But that's once again, just my opinion. Thoughts? Hold on one second. Let me see here. Yeah, I know. One second. Thoughts on true node in Gemini and Sagittarius. Is that your north node? Is your north node in Gemini? You share the same Mercury and that's what tends to happen a lot of the time. So a lot of the time, like for whatever reason, like you can look at that being like the karmic thing where it's like you incarnate with like the same moon as your mother or like the same like placements. Oops, I sent someone likes by accident. <laughs> Sometimes you gas, yeah, that happens a lot. That happens a lot, especially when you are learning the psychic world. Like gaslighting yourself is a huge thing. And it's like, you really, really have to learn like to just like trust it because it's like, okay, so everybody has like their own intuitive muscle. Everybody has like their own like team that works with them and all these sorts of things. So you really have to listen um, to it. Is it weird if a girl doesn't have Instagram? No, I don't think that's weird. I think everyone can do whatever they want. You said, wait, you have a 12th house stellium and some of your dreams come true. And you, yeah, see, 12th house energy, 12th house energy is like, okay, I have a video on 12th house energy. You guys can check it out on my YouTube page. I go so much more in depth because I can talk about 12th house and 8th house. So Pisces, 12th house, Neptunian, 8th house, Scorpio, um, Pluto, sometimes Mars, okay? Because Mars is like back in the day, Scorpio used to be ruled by Mars. Anyways, so... Okay, I can talk about these forever, but I'm going to give you kind of like a brief overview. 12th house energy is psychic, connected to the other side, intuitive. You basically have these ideas and these like dreams, right? And it's like what happens for the Piscean energy, 12th house Neptunian, it's like you are so in your imagination where it, bas it basically becomes real for you. That's why like Piscean people are really good at manifesting. You said your mom once used spells you don't know to get along with her sister. Interesting. Yeah, like, that's interesting. That's I would say that's more so 8th house Scorpio, Scorpionic energy, so that's interesting. What does it mean if you share almost the exact same birth chart as your significant other? Um, A lot of the time, like, what I picked up on is, like, there's always, like, some form of soul connection with people who share, like, the same birthday, um like all these sorts of things, like there's some sort of soul connection where it's like you guys are here to like help each other grow, uh, learn something from each other. You said North Node in Gemini. So North Node in Gemini. Okay, so you have to look at like North Node and South Node like this. South Node is your past life. North Node is the direction we're heading in. So North Node, what they say, okay, once we complete the North Node, that you cross out of the Earth plane. So you have to look at the North Node as like you're working towards it for your whole life. South Node is your past life. So it's like what tends to happen is south node is familiar to us and we tend to fall into the south node because it's something that we're familiar with. It's something that we're comfortable with. It's something that we know, but you're actually meant to focus on your north node. So north node in Gemini is like 
it's almost like the energy of a big fish in a small pond. So you could be interested in like, it depends what house it's in also. So you could be interested in like being a mayor of your town. You know what I mean? Things like this where like you're known in like the area that you're in. Maybe like having some sort of classes in the area that you're in. Maybe being known, like, you know what I mean? It's like community and creating a community. That's kind of what it is. It's also anything to do with like communication and speaking. So like part of your purpose would be written or spoken word. It could be social media. It could be all these sorts of things. Okay, let's see what else. You said your mom marked the date on the calendar when she woke up and on that your mom and on that same day her dad died. Wow. Yeah, see? Psychic intuition is is real. You keep having bad experiences with your fifth house Capricorn. Does it mean my south your fifth you keep having bad experiences with your fifth house Capricorn? Does it mean your south node as well as something? I don't understand your question. Can you please reword it? Your mom has 12th house sun and moon. She had strict parents who didn't let her go out at all. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, it's, it's, it's interesting because it's like, the thing with the 12th house energy is like, there's a lot of past life enemies that come through and like they appear to be like loved ones. That's what tends to happen with 12th house energy as, as well. You found a girl online and you found out you, she, you found out you had the same birthday, but she was depressed and it didn't work. Do you think that was a karmic lesson? Yes, absolutely it was. What do you think of shadow work? So important, you guys. Shadow work is like the most important thing and like the most beneficial thing that you'll do for yourselves, for sure. Really, really important. Um, I don't know like what other people talk about shadow work, but the way that I see it is just like acknowledging what your shadows are, what your dark side is, all these sorts of traits that you might have because everyone has them. We're, we're, we're dual, right? We're born in duality. So it's just like integrating them, acknowledging them, knowing that they're there, accepting them, all these sorts of things. So it, it's really important to basically do this and heal. Maybe all of your planets are direct because you have a lot of Scorpio <laughs> Honestly, Scorpio placements are intense. You're going to go through so much change. You're psychic. You're a medium probably also with all the Scorpionic placements in there. Um, Scorpio also, like when you have a lot. Okay, so this is the thing. Like second house, eighth house, access, so Scorpio Taurus. They both love money. The thing is, Scorpio deals with other people's money. So it's like sometimes they might want to get rich quick or like things like this. If they're like, again, in the lower version of Scorpio. When she, yeah, it's probably from a lot of suppressed anger to Ray one. Do you have any Patreon deities? No, I don't have a Patreon. I mean, I did and then I didn't anymore. So I don't right now. But I do have my... Um, my YouTube page. So definitely check it out there. Thoughts on Scorpio, Mars, and Venus in the third house. Scorpio, Mars, and Venus in the third house. Okay. Scorpio, Venus is intense because it's like, that's basically like how you are in like romantic relationships. Scorpio, Mars is actually a good placement to have because it's like, it used to be its home, right? So it's like, that's how you express the energy, right? But sometimes the thing is Scorpio, Mars literally like when they're mad and again if they're in the shadow traits are gonna say so many things to you they're, it's like with their tongue like they want to cut people with their tongue hello welcome it's rage cake let me know if you have any questions anything to do with metaphysical astrology all these sorts of things so that's the thing like scorpio mars because mars is all about how we handle anger and it also deals with um how we get motivated so scorpionic things can motivate you so it's like maybe again astrology could be something that motivates you um the occult right you again have light side dark side money would be a motivate motivation for scorpio scorpio loves money like that's the thing that like people i feel like don't talk about with the scorpionic energy but it's like scorpio loves money they want to be rich but the thing is with Scorp they want to be wealthy but the thing is with the scorpionic energy they know they don't have to work hard so that's the difference between them and, and taurus taurus is going to put in the hard work like they're like this is my plan this is how i'm going to go about like getting like the material like luxurious things scorpio also wants this but they know they can manipulate energy to get the things that they want. Hey, welcome. So third house. So third house. Okay, so for you, anything to do with like social media could motivate you. Um, networking events, like anything that's Gemini, like uh, communication. You could get motivated by like, you get like an idea to do something or feel like inspired or motivated. Like when you're hanging out with your friends, um, all these sorts of things. Also, it deals with siblings as well. Venus in the third house. One second, let me let me go back up. Scorpio reminds me of dirty money. Well, they can be. That's the thing. Like that's the thing with the Scorpio energy. It's like Scorpio, so it's like okay, everything to do with like gambling. Um, 
you know, dealing. Some words probably I can't say on here, right? But you guys are going to catch my drift. Like, those are all lower level Scorpio things. Like, that's Scorpionic, right? All these sorts of anything to, like, try to combine. Like, that's the thing. But also, Scorpio becomes the alchemist when they heal. So it's like, always, always, always strive towards that. Let's see. What else do we have in here? <laughs> I'm just laughing at the Scorpio dirty money thing. It's so funny because it's true when they're in the lower aspects of themselves. Your dad has Saturn retrograde and you also have Saturn retrograde. Yes, it's definitely karmic. He probably had an absence of a father, mental, emotional, physical, and then maybe that could have taken place within your life as well. Aquarius, Sun, Aries, Moon, and Sag rising. Welcome. That's so fun and bubbly. I'm like tapping into your energy. That's a lot of fun. Does astrology explain why first daughters often resemble their fathers? <laughs> That's interesting. Well, for the father, you would look at the sun, okay? So you would really look at the sun sign in your natal chart. That's going to tell you about the father. <laughs> um, I'm just laughing at your comment. That's so funny. Um... What else? Saturn, like I mentioned, if it's retrograde, it could tell you about the father as well. Scorpio stellium in the third house as well. Venus. Only Venus is in the second house. So you have Scorpio Venus in the second house. Whenever you have an argument with someone, I just learned. Yeah, that's what it is. So also like, okay, so back to like the Mars in Scorpio. It's like, okay, this is the thing. Scorpio, like, okay, they're so like calculated in the sense that it's like, okay, Let's say, and this is this literally goes with what you're saying. Let's say something happened to you in a dynamic where you didn't like what that person did, especially with the Mars and Scorpio. When you get mad or frustrated at that person, it's like you're gonna like hit them where it hurts. Like you're gonna take something that they did to you and like mention it or like bring it up or like maybe mention like a shadow trait that they have, all these sorts of things. You have a lot of Aquarius energy in your chart, positive or negative. Okay, this is why I'm picking up on like very bubbly energy. So Aquarius energy basically is like, okay, first of all, you guys are ahead of your time. Okay. So because of this, you guys might feel like you're an outlier. Okay. Of some sort. Okay. You're going to feel that next for you guys. It's like, you're okay. So this is the thing I was mentioning this earlier, but I know you, I know you just joined. So this is what happens when you look at the wheel, right? You have to look at all of the signs in this way. The first air sign is Gemini which is like the child, like bubbly, excited. Like it's like literally like their first lifetime on earth. Like that's the type of energy. They're so excited to do things, meet people, all these sorts of things. Then you go into Libra. Libra is more so, again, we're connecting these, like we're kind of bringing the energy a little bit closer to us, right? We're connecting these people that we met, maybe dinner parties, uh, hosting events, like these types of things, right? By the time we get to Aquarius, like Aquarius is just like tired in that way where it's like, they're not overly interested and in, like, being super scattered like um gemini but they're still they're still an air sign so you guys have a lot of ideas and you're meant to act on the ideas that you get because usually they're trends okay usually like with aquarian energy it's like some sort of idea that's meant to propel the collective forward you said it's true your dad is an alcohol addict has a bad rep reputation or sorry re relationship with his father also has neptune in the 12th yeah, so that's the thing, like, okay, unfortunately, like, all the water signs and water placements, when they're in the shadow, because if they don't deal with their emotions, they find some sort of escape from their emotions, and, like, all the water signs have some form of, like, vice or addiction that they have to deal with. Um, it's going to be different for, like, the different signs, so, but the thing is, like, 12th house, Piscean energy, a lot of the time can be drug addicts. Um, usually, cancer, cancerian placements fall more so into alcohol abuse. But again, it's some sort of, it's an escape. It's an escape. And then um, scorpionic energy can be like sex addiction, like all these sorts of things. So it's like, because they're feeling everything deeply, if they're not balanced, if they're not aware of this, and this is why astrology is good, because then we're aware of what's going on, right? If they're not balanced, if they're not aware of this, they can fall into, the, into addiction. So all water placements, water houses have to like learn how to balance this. You said you have no Scorpio placements, but 8th house Venus gives you, yeah, yeah, that's the thing, like, <laughs> Scorpionic energy, it's so funny, because, like, for the longest time, I was like, why is Scorpio not a fire sign? Like, I understand why it's water, because it deals with, like, the undercurrent of energy, but, like, they're very fiery, like, they're very fiery, so it's like, yeah, one placement is definitely going to give you that undertone, and then later I realized, I'm like, oh, it's because it used to be ruled by Mars, so it makes sense, like, that they have, because Mars is the, is the god of war, and that's really the Scorpionic energy, like, sometimes, and also, like, people who have a lot of Scorpionic energy in their chart, like, can be intimidating to other people also. What does it mean, you said also eighth house sun in the, in the whole sign, yeah, 
What does it mean to have fifth house cap Capricorn? Okay, or Chiron. You have to look at Chiron as like what you're healing through in this lifetime. So for you, you're going to be healing through something, working with the public, working hard. And fifth house is expressing yourself creatively. So that's how you heal, okay, in this lifetime. You have an Aries stellium. Welcome, Aries sun, but you don't relate to the confidence that they have. I mean, sometimes it takes some time to build up. I wonder what the rest of your chart is. Because like Aries energy is like, they're willing, like they know they're going to win. So they're willing to like fall as many times. Before you started learning astrology, you thought it's earth. You have a bad public image because of your exes. You have to learn not to care. That's the biggest thing in this life is like you have to learn not to care. Honestly, like nothing really matters at the end of the day. So it's like, don't worry about what people think of you. It's just most like don't let people silence you or like, you know what I mean? It's important to just like speak your truth is really what it is like. That's like the best thing you can do for yourself. Whatever your truth is, obviously, as long as you're not harming anyone in the way, you know. Hey, welcome. We're talking about metaphysics, astrology, all these sorts of things. You've been through shadow work for a few weeks and it's been going great so far. Yes, 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 yes. What's coming through to tell you, though, is don't get too stuck in like focusing on just shadow work for whatever reason. Shadow work is great though. Like it's, 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 it's really important. Like it really is important. You said your sister has Scorpio moon in the third house. She's fighting a lot with mom, 12th house. Yeah. The thing is like, especially in family dynamics, Scorpio, Pisces and 12th house, like there's a lot of unresolved and unspoken things, you know? So it's like the arguments come from something else that happened earlier on in life that like has never been resolved. Aquarius romantically you've always been attracted to water signs really interesting it's funny because Aquarius has aqua in it I was always kind of like okay Aquarius should be a water sign um water signs could work for you actually because they might give you the depth that like Aquarius is like secretly searching for I know so many Virgo risings it's because like Virgo rising is just like royalty energy like you guys just know Aries sun Sagittarius moon and Virgo rising let me know the rest of your chart. It's Rage Cake, like some other placements for you. Like, are you are you an Aquarius sun? <laughs> what I will tell you guys is like Virgo placements also tend to be freaky. But anyways, you didn't hear that from me. Are there any Pisces risings in here? Pisces risings. Pisces rising, you guys are finishing some sort of like karma you're ending like you're ending the cycle like there's some sort of karma that's like coming to an end for you guys with pisces rising lilith and aqua so lilith is a dark moon so it's kind of like again your shadow side right your dark side so you would kind of have to look at like the shadow aspects of aquarius which is like being detached like like super distant from people you met someone he has venus in your eighth house and venus and you have and your venus is in his eighth house oh that's interesting because eighth house is about joint finances and resources aquarius on neptune so, oh so you're the aquarius stellium yes 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 i don't know i mean earth signs could be grounding for the aquarius energy because you guys tend to have like a lot of thoughts and a lot of things up here you said cry you said crazy because you're a pisces rising and you always thought it was your last lifetime on earth yeah 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 usually like 12 house piscean people like they really feel that it's like their last lifetime on earth what does it mean if your significant others venus falls in your fifth house and mars in your eighth house okay what's coming through to mention okay this i'm just like this is just what's psychically coming through is just be careful that there's no sexual manipulation like that's just what psychically came through for you venus in the fifth house though is like you guys okay so that's kind of like having venus and leo which is like you guys want to look good together right um also you probably want to be praised by your partner like that's like the leo energy like they need to have like admiration and all these sorts of things What is the best match for a person with a lot of Scorpio energy? Okay, so Scorpio, here's the thing. Like, Scorpio basically, like, wants a partner who understands them on an intuitive level, who, 
like because the thing is with scorpio energy it's like okay everyone always talks about scorpio's like you know having a high sex drive all these sorts of things but it's like actually what tends to happen with scorpio it's like mind body spirit right so they want someone that they can connect with on all these levels scorpio energy like honestly taurus could be like a really good match because both of you seek um like loyalty and all these sorts of things and you're in opposition i find that scorpio and leo tend to manifest each other but that's usually when they're both in their egos because what happens with scorpio like this is another thing people don't talk about with scorpios is like scorpio can have a really big ego like they can like literally be like i'm like i'm royalty kind of thing you know so oh sorry you asked about job matches <laughs> i was still in like the relationship energy maybe that was from for someone who was tuning in um okay job matches for scorpio energy okay here's the thing it can manifest so many different ways it's like you could be a detective you could be interested in being a private investigator you could be interested in mediumship okay it really depends on what your calling is um it depends on like the rest of your placements like it's something where i'd have to look at like the whole chart to see because like a lot of the time i find like eighth house scorpio energy to be kind of like a additional energy you know like a like um it's kind of like okay this is the way that i see it it's like within a chart it's like okay yes it can manifest in the ways that i told you but like scorpionic energy is like they learn how to work with manifestation so really you can do whatever you want ultimately at the end of the day mars is in libra can you tell me about this energy so the thing is when it comes to expressing anger or getting motivated for you oops hold on my laptop's battery is dying so i'm gonna sign off soon but mars in libra hold on let me just turn this off um, you might have a hard time getting motivated. You might have a hard time picking something you want to do. Um, you could like fall into that indecisive energy. You could also fall into people pleasing. You could also fall into people pleasing and not actually express your anger. Also, the Libra does tend to like suppress anger and then explode. So that could also happen for you. Um, what else did you have in there? You said Mars and Libra. Yeah, Mars and Libra. That's really what that is with a Libra and energy. I'm just shutting down my laptop. Okay cancer rising and you feel like you're a mom to everyone oh my gosh yeah that's so cancer energy and you know what's funny you know what's funny with the cancer energy it's because they want to be nurtured that's the thing so you should allow people to nurture you thoughts on dating your south node sign i don't have any thoughts i don't think it's gonna like like i don't find it to have any sort of like benefit or or it's like neutral Capricorn stellium, but you feel more like a Scorpio. Honestly, that's another thing. Like Capricorns and Scorpios, like both have like that I don't give an F attitude. Like they're very like no BS. Like they do have that um in common. Yeah, people pleasing. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, okay, so I actually recently did a video. I think it was for Moon and Libra, but in general, this applies to like Libra energy in general. It's like a lot of the time, like Libra people, for whatever reason, like what tends to happen with them is like from young they have some form of doubt that gets instilled in them from parents right so what they have to learn to do is basically like get to the point because they're indecisive for this reason because like there's things that they want to do and then there's things that like they fear that aren't going to be accepted or whatever like um yeah accepted in one way shape or form so you kind of have to get to the point where you're like um is this my thing is this somebody else's thing that i'm worried about like that's kind of what happens with like the libra energy let me see here. You have 12 house industries with this guy, his moon. Son, that's definitely a past life connection of some sort, I feel like. I feel like you guys are clearing some sort of karma from past life. Their sun, it, their sun conjunct my moon, both Scorpio. Girl, you hit the point. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. I don't remember what I said, but I'm glad that it resonated. You're dating yourself, node sign. That's awesome honestly when i look at people's natal charts there's there's always some sort of conjunction that takes place like it's never going to be like completely different charts you can't ever stay interested in dating you can't tell if it's your distant aqua or not probably aquarius like just like yes Aquari okay aquarius needs to be free it depends where you have it especially if it's in the moon you tend to be detached so if there's someone who tries to hold on for dear life you're not going to be interested in this Twelfth house industries, yeah, definitely past life of some sort. So sun conjunct moon, both Scorpio. Their sun, their sun, their sun is conjunct your moon. So there could be like a push pull between like ego and emotional world. Welcome new people joining. Let me know if you guys have questions about. I'm gonna probably stay 
for, let me see what that is, eight more minutes, and then I'm gonna go. You have 12th house Jupiter and Leo in retrograde. So you can make money from doing something within the world of spirituality, um, connecting with people in this way, anything to do with like romance. So maybe you're interested, in, it depends on the rest of your chart, but you could, cause like 12th house energy is like on a span. So it could be like movies, it can be psychic worlds, it can be art, it can be so many different things. You said, and retrograde is just going to kind of add a resistance. So like up until your Saturn return, you might have a hard time like with abundance in one way, shape or form. Uh, because you're a Cancer rising and Virgo moon, you love your mom. Yeah. So, okay, this is the thing. Cancer placements. Okay, this is the, th this is the thing. And it's so funny because I just did a video on this um, on my YouTube channel. Make sure you guys subscribe. Um, I go way more in depth on there, but about like certain placements. So this is the thing when I see cancer in someone's natal chart, okay? When I see like a lot of cancerian energy in someone's natal chart, basically what it tells me is like you're healing your feminine side. So you're either going to attract a lot of people who are feminine into your life. Um, and a lot of the time it's connected to the mother. So, or whoever played the mother figure in your life. So you always have to look at everything. So it's like whoever was the dominant feminine role because this person teaches you how to receive. So what tends to happen is a lot of the time, Cancerian people, there it could go two ways. It's like either there was an absence of the mother of the mother, um, in one way, shape, or form. Okay, so there was some form of absence where like you have a deep mother wound and you weren't nurtured, or there was like this intense connection with the mother and you have to learn how to cut cords. Are there any retrogrades that could affect Aqua Aries or Sagittarius soon? So June is actually going to be a really calm month. Um, we're just coming out of um, Mercury retrograde in Gemini, but that's not going to affect, it's going to affect your, your Sag. So you would check to see like what house is your Sag in, and then that's what's being affected in terms of communication. You have zero cancer placements and you realize you don't really get along with cancer placements. Interesting. Yeah. Um... The thing is like cancer and placements like sometimes get the rap of like being moody or whatever but it's like because like you have to look at them like literally like the crab right they need to retreat and like detox energetically thanks so much that's what you learn nowadays that's awesome that's awesome to know yeah the water placements like have to like learn to channel their emotions in one way shape or form so it's like if they can't express it to people then write it down if you know or find a creative outlet like these sorts of things that's why a lot of them fall into some sort of addictions when they're like again in the shadow we have a light side and a shadow side thank you guys so much for the likes i'm enjoying these lives i will be back sag in the first and the 12th so that's where like the mercury retrograde is hitting you so it's like in terms of like your identity and your ego and also like probably like past life things are being cleared up for you during this time let me know if you guys have any more questions i will be leaving four minutes is affecting your fourth house and your 10th house. Yeah, so it's your home and probably like career or work or something of that sort. Is this Mercury retrograde you're talking about? So there could be things that are like being cleared up in terms of the communication within the home, family life, all these sorts of things. And then 10th house is like at work and all these sorts of things. Career, like ambitions. No worries, thank you for joining. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Let me know if you guys have any other questions before I leave. I have two more minutes, or sorry, three actually. Leo sign and you hated Aquarius until you found out that he's the love of your life and you don't understand yeah so leo your opposition is aquarius so you guys actually learn from each other and like what's kind of funny is like aquarius placements secretly want to be seen you know because leo's like all about like the show right and then it's like leo learns from aquarius because it's kind of like again you're connecting people in that way shape or form you said sag sun cap moon aquarius rising you have a Capricorn stellium Virgo rising and you procrastinate so much and only study for a day or two before the exam. You feel like you have zero discipline. I know. 
honestly, like, it's really, it's like, the thing is, it's like everything these, like, I find that, like, everything these days is so fast paced that it is actually incredibly difficult to focus in general. Because, it's like, if you look at it, like, TikToks are short, like, you know what I mean? Like, everything is, like, so incredibly fast paced. So, like, actually sitting down and reading a book, like, definitely it takes, it takes, it takes a while to, like, actually get into the groove. You feel like you'll be single forever? <laughs> no. I don't think, like, I don't think people, like, I know when people, like, worry that they're going to be single forever. Like, I don't think that you're going to be single forever. Don't worry. You're just on it and you can't figure it out. You said you feel like you can't do well and won't do it at all because you'll feel lousy. No, don't put your self-worth on, like, academia. Don't worry. Honestly, like, it doesn't, like, it shouldn't, it shouldn't, like, be, like, the identity of who you are as a person. My big three are um, Libra, Sun, Scorpio, Moon, and Libra Rising. But now it's moved. So it's like my Sun is now in um, Scorpio, Moon is in Sag, and my Rising is now in also Sag. Or sorry, also Scorpio. Okay, you guys, I'm going to take one more question if you guys have, and then I will be leaving until next time. I'm glad I started doing the lives. It's a lot of fun. And thank you so much for the likes and the shares, actually. I see some of you guys shared it on here as well. And for the questions. What's your question? Sorry, I didn't see it. Probably went up too fast. You're trying to find where is the option. Option for what? What are you looking for? Oh, to find dominant planets. Okay, I'm gonna send you, like I'm gonna send you the step-by-step. -step. Um, Let me just screenshot your name. I had it on my page before, so I'll go see if I can find it and then I'll tag, I'll tag you in it, right? As soon as I get off. Okay, guys, I'm gonna get off now. Thanks so much, you guys. I'll definitely tag you literally right now as soon as I get off. And the rest of you guys, I hope you have a wonderful evening or day. Depends where you guys are. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye.